<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I, I, I pray that the things that we're going to be sharing real quick here I'll encourage you. Amen. I like a nice big clock, so. <laughs> what? Uh-oh. Yeah, there it is. This is that real low. Uh, there we go. Thank you, Bright. Amen. Well, well, let's open up word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your spirit, thank you for your word. And uh, Lord, let your word encourage us and encourage our faith. Amen. And Lord, I thank you to speak as your spirit would be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I've been studying my faith food. Amen. And Brother Hagin's faith food. And I just want to talk about real quick that you have, that you have what you ask for. Amen. But how do you have what you ask for? How do you know that you can have what you ask for? What What is there to indicate that you can actually have what you ask for? Well, the Bible has a few things uh, to share on that. And I just want to share a bit on that, just as an exhortation, just as an encouragement, just to, to keep the faith gear going. Amen? Amen? And I want to encourage you to, if you don't have anything you're using your faith for, find something to use your faith for. Because like any muscle... You got to grow faith by use. If you want to grow in the fruits of the Spirit, you've got to believe that you're able to walk in those fruits. In other words, it may be contrary to what you're feeling. Okay? There are times where it's contrary to what you're seeing. Okay? What you're seeing is anger, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you got to believe that. Use your faith. Exercise your faith to reach into the spirit that is in your heart and then cause it to renew your mind. And then also guide your actions. Same thing with anything concerning the, the Word of God. And I want to go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and it says, uh, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So one thing I would like to point out, as it was pointed out to me as a student of the Word, if God hears you, you have it. Amen. <laughs> if He hears you, you got it. Amen. Amen. Say, I got what God hears. Amen. Amen. So when we, when we're, so what are we going to do? How are we going to know that He hears us? And it says, and if we know that He hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now, the context in which this 1 John 5, 14 and 15 is, is written in is the context of someone coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and being born again. That's the context. But how do we know it's God's will uh, for us to be born again? So when we do ask Jesus to come into our heart, we get Jesus in our heart. Amen. He comes into our heart. How do we know that? Well, because, well, let's go to another writing of John, John 15. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And here we are in, um, I'm going to go to verse 7, 15, 7. If you abide in me, again, that word abide, in the Greek, what it means is so familiar with your surroundings that you know every, you know where every piece of furniture is. You know, you know exactly the path in, in the basement to follow to get to wherever you're going. If you, 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 you go out in the yard, you, you know the paths, that there may be some paths that you have to walk between the bushes that you know, but why do you know it? Because you've dwelt there so long. You've you've uh, uh, you, you even may have been partaking or part of the reason there is a path right there. I mean, you 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 inhabit it. You can close your eyes and walk around and find your way through 
your house. That's the kind of abiding. That's the, the implication of the Greek here uh, in, in, in the scripture. It says, if you abide in me and my words, and see, this is it. You, you, abiding in him, that means you're, you're so familiar with Jesus. That doesn't mean you know everything about Jesus, but you know his spirit. And his spirit is familiar with you. And because his spirit is familiar with you, you are, because you've abided in him, you've lived in him, you've dwelt in him, and he's dwelt in you. You're familiar with his ways. And you, you know, oh, I know Jesus would never say that. I mean, if someone says that, do you have any scripture? You know, even if I don't have a scripture, I know the character of my Lord. I know how he is. Because I know him. I've been knowing him since 1984. So I hope I know him pretty good. Amen. But there's always more because he's, well, he's everlasting. <laughs> All right. And he says, if you abide in me, and then he says, my word abides in me. Again, that means God's word is so familiar with you that anything that sounds like the Bible, okay, and but yet it's not line upon line, precept upon precept, you know they missed the line or they're missing the precept. And however, I don't care if they quote a scripture. You can misquote scriptures. The devil misquotes scriptures. Right? He said to Jesus, you know, well, you know, if you'll jump off of this, the Bible says, <laughs> Bible says in Psalm 91, he'll give his angels charge over you that you'll not dash your foot against the stone. What did Jesus say? Uh, dude, you don't tempt God, okay? <laughs> that's, my, that's my version. You don't tempt God. Why? Because he used another part of the scripture to be familiar and how you can interpret this scripture, you, you're familiar with that scripture. So there's a balance. But see, this is what he's saying here. If you, my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And look, look at this. It says, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. Amen. See that you know this, this is just a, a, a brief exhortation. Abide in the Lord. Let the Lord. I want to be able to ask what I want, and know by faith I'm getting it. Now I'll tell you another thing is following the Holy Spirit on the inside. You know there are things that you need to discern by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's not just what the Bible says. But you have the spirit of wisdom and the, the knowledge of what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you personally. Now, it won't be contradictory to the scriptures, but it may help guide your use of scripture. This is an important thing about walking in faith because, you see, when the Holy Spirit talks to you on the inside, and I'm wrestling with this over some things, you know, you know, and it's okay. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does, and that is teach me and guide me into all truth. Same as you, I'm sure. The point is, is when you take the Bible, you got to take it in the context of the Word, from Genesis to Revelation, because you've abided in the Scriptures and familiar with you. you. You live in it. You live in it. And the Holy Spirit, who is on the inside, guides you, gives you wisdom in the use of your sword. Amen. <laughs> you understand you can have, you know, you can have two different people with a sword. One who's been trained, like the Roman soldiers were trained military, professional swordsmen, and they went up against a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? Barbarians that really weren't trained. They just went berserk and they beat their pants off. Why? Because a, a trained swordsman knows how to use his weapon. And he knows also, add to that, the care of that weapon so that it stays sharp, stays shiny, and it doesn't rust out, doesn't fall apart, doesn't fall off the hilt, the sword doesn't fall off the hilt, it <laughs> stays on. Because you care for it. You know your equipment. Well, that's what we got to be. Good swordsmen. Amen? Amen? Trained Christians in the Word of God. Trained Christians. So when we do ask, oh yeah, 
we get what we ask for. Because the Bible says so. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like you asked the Lord when you got saved. Same thing when it comes to healing. Same thing when it comes to prosperity. All the areas of everything that you could have, any anything you need wisdom in, God has it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that we're abiding in it, Lord, and that your word is abiding in us, Lord. And we just thank you for your wisdom and the use of, our, of the word of God in our hearts. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship.